Hey up squad, I want to talk to you today about why I think that this year is probably going to be the year that either makes or breaks the Nintendo Switch. Make or break, but why? It's a very successful console. It sold over 50 million copies. Irrelevant. But it sold more than the Xbox. Irrelevant. But smash, smash. Irrelevant. Okay, let's start over. If the beginning of this video made you think that I do not like this console, you would be mistaken. I fucking love this console. I am in love with this console right now. But like I said, today I want to talk to you about why this year is without a doubt the most important year for Nintendo, at least in recent history. I'm talking like the last decade. So on the 3rd of March this year, Switch hit a very important milestone. The Switch turned three years old. So we're now in the fourth year of its life cycle. So what does that mean for the console? Well, for us as players, it means that Games that were released in 2017, Breath of the Wild, uh, Mario Kart, Splatoon 2, Mario Odyssey, those games have been played to death. Specifically for developers, however, it means that the console's main franchises should now be in their uh, second development cycle. So obviously we've heard about Breath of the Wild 2, we know that that is in development, um, we don't know what stage of development yet, we don't really know much about it, but we know it's happening. Nintendo are obviously an excellent company. They have some of gaming's most notable IPs in their locker. Um, some of which we haven't seen on the Switch at all yet. At least not in the form of a AAA game. I'm talking about Donkey Kong, Pikmin, F-Zero. The last F-Zero game we had, at least a AAA one on a Nintendo platform was way back on the GameCube. Um, Star Fox. How have we not had a fucking Star Fox game on the Switch yet? Now, I'm not saying that any of these are definitely going to happen, but I'll be genuinely surprised if we don't see at least one or two of those um, franchises getting a AAA game announced this year. And I'm also expecting at least one or two more follow-ups besides Breath of the Wild 2, Mario Kart 9. Come on, it's time. Just stop it now. None of this is to say that I think Nintendo have been particularly quiet. We've had a new Pokemon game this year. Animal Crossing has just come out. We know that Metroid Prime 4 is in development. And those are things to look forward to. But there needs to be more. This year, Nintendo need to be bold. A, because, like I said, it's the fourth year now. They should be in their second development cycle. We should be seeing some big games announced this summer. And B, and probably more obviously, is because we expect to see Rival Hardware launching this year. But it'll come as no surprise to most of you when I say that the Nintendo Switch um, is more than a step behind when it comes to uh, sheer power and capabilities of its counterparts in Sony's PlayStation 4 and Microsoft's Xbox One. Now, unless you've been living in complete isolation, you'll also be aware that both Sony and Microsoft have announced new consoles scheduled to be on the market by the end of this year. Now, those consoles dwarf their own predecessors in the PS4 and Xbox One, which in turn, they dwarf the Nintendo Switch in terms of gaming capability. Well, there's a convenient solution to this, right? Nintendo do what everybody thought they were gonna do last year and they release a Switch Pro. <laughs> oh, no, 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 no. <laughs> the Switch Pro is the last thing that we as Nintendo fans want. A Switch Pro console would only serve to bridge a gap that Microsoft and Sony crossed literally years ago, like, 2013 years ago. The reason being that the payoffs from something like a Switch Pro are not the same payoffs that the consumer would really be looking for. 
there's nobody out there complaining that the switch load times are too long or that the screen resolution's piss poor. And those are the kind of improvements that you could expect from a Switch Pro. Could load times be quicker? Yes. Could screen resolution be better? Yes. But ultimately, are those the things that will keep the Switch a big player in the console market come 2021 when the next generation consoles are on the shelves? No, 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 no. <laughs> they can't upgrade the hardware of the console in such a way that would allow us to play high-end current gen games because you simply can't fit that kind of hardware into a handheld device at least not without drastically changing the size of it. That's why what happens instead is we see Nintendo working with third-party developers to downscale their games and port them across um, to a point that they can work on Switch hardware, which Nintendo have done very successfully so far. So yeah, I'm not a hardware expert, uh, but I suspect any improvements that uh, they wanted to make to the Switch's hardware uh, would be next to impossible without... Um, at least changing the size of the handheld console and let's be honest that's the way that most of us play it so the other option would be to put some sort of processing power into the docking station so that when the console is docked it has some sort of increased power um, to enable it to upscale the games uh, but it would be a costly piece of equipment to make and probably a costly piece of equipment therefore to buy and you'd have to kind of buy it separately because you would already have a switch uh, and it would just be your original dock that was now obsolete and also I don't think that devs are gonna um, develop games with this higher processing power in mind that will then look like dog shit or not even be able to run at all when the console is undocked with that being said, upgrading the Switch hardware is probably out of the question. So what do Nintendo actually need to do in order to stay relevant? Firstly, the reason the console has done so well so far is largely down to these two consoles. Starting with its predecessor, the Wii U. Uh, hilariously, this is one of my favourite consoles of all time, but that sentiment was not shared with the rest of the world. And the console completely fucking tanked after its release in 2012. There is a litany of reasons why the Wii U became that kid that you didn't even remember being in your year at school. For time's sake, I'm going to just whittle it down to what I believe to be the main three reasons why the Wii U completely tanked. Number one, it came out in 2012, just one year before the Xbox One and the PS4 hit the shelves, and the disparity in power between the two consoles was just far too much. Point number two, the Wii U, unlike its older brother in the Wii, was not a console that was in everybody's living room. Therefore, developers had essentially no pressure to actually develop games for the console at all, which meant by the end of year one, certainly by the end of year two, there was that essentially no third party development for the console, at least not for any game that you'd actually want to play. Finally, and probably most importantly, in what will go down as probably the most stupid decision by a company releasing a new product, Nintendo decided to put the name of their six year old product in the title of their brand new product and call it the Wii U, leading many people, including myself for a while, to not even realize that this fucking thing was a whole new console. Many people just assumed that it was some sort of clunky tablet addition to the Wii. And why wouldn't they? Like, the thing looked almost identical and Oh yeah, it had the same fucking name. Anyway, moving on to the Wii. That was released in 2006. It was an insanely successful console. It became a feature in almost every living room on the planet. Notice how I said living room and not crusty teen bedroom. This was because it was the epitome of a family console. This was a console that was loved by children. It was loved by golf dads and... 
It was loved by mums who wanted to do Zumba in their living room. But you know who it wasn't adored by? Crusty gaming teens. They were upstairs shredding the fuck out of Modern Warfare on their 360s. Don't get me wrong, there were some amazing games that came out on the Wii for the old school Nintendo player. <clears throat> Mario Galaxy and Skyward Sword among them. But generally, I just feel like they were kind of overlooked, certainly by me anyway. I didn't play either of those games till sort of way further down the line. So the year is 2016, the month is October, and starved Nintendo fans have not had a straight up through the middle console since the GameCube, which was released in 2003. And boom. This Switch. is the Nintendo Switch. This is what I'm talking about. No way! Now, Yes, there was scepticism about the Switch. Was it going to be another gimmicky console from Nintendo? But people were excited nonetheless just to see that Nintendo were making an attempt to step back into the home console market. This was also backed up by the promise of a brand new Zelda game that was going to be available at launch. Fast forward to the 3rd of March 2017 and the Switch is flying off the shelves. Nintendo fans had been starved for so long and this was kind of like Nintendo's redemption. By the end of year one we started to see more and more third party involvement and by the start of year three there was so much third party involvement that people were flooding to the shops to pick up a switch so that they could play their favourite third party IPs you know on the bus on the way to work on their lunch break sat at home on the couch with Netflix on the big telly. So for me, that's the big one really. That's the area where Nintendo need to apply the most pressure and the most focus. You know, Nintendo have to be realistic and understand that the question is gonna be asked, why is this console still worth buying? When I could be playing the PlayStation 5, 4K resolution, zero load times, 10.3 teraflop GPU, support backwards compatibility nintendo's answer has to be well because you can pick this thing up for half the price you can play some of the last generation's top games on the go also look at all these great nintendo ips that we've announced donkey kong there you go star fox it's all yours kirby have it have it son mario kart 9 but that's just the start really because see when i switch my playstation 4 on i can jump onto the store i can purchase myself a ps2 classic title i can purchase myself a ps3 classic title um and i can play them on my playstation 4 console where the fuck is that nintendo why are we not seeing GameCube games and N64 games piled onto that e-store. Re-releasing games that came out on the Wii U six years ago with a full $60 price tag is not backwards compatibility. Nintendo needs to put the time and the money into figuring out how they can emulate the classics from the GameCube and the N64. I can understand why that would be a little bit more complicated controls wise for Wii games, but I'm sure this can be overlooked if come spring 2021, I can dive onto the eStore on my Nintendo Switch and purchase myself a copy of Wind Waker or Paper Mario and play it on my fucking Switch. How fucking cool would that be? Like, why has this not been done? Am I missing something? Again, I'm not trying to rib too hard on the Switch. I fucking love the console. Like, I, I genuinely, genuinely love playing this thing. I'm just being realistic. Lastly, though, and this is a must, Nintendo have to make some improvements to the absolute joke of an online service. Is that too harsh? Okay, firstly, I understand that it's cheap, and a lot of mums and dads are happy to spare £4 a month for their kid to hose down other kids in fluorescent paint on Splatoon 2 or whatever. But 
why not introduce um, a Nintendo Online Plus service where real gamers can pay an extra £2 or an extra $2 a month and unlock additional features such as party chat and maybe a free one free game a month or something like that. I mean, Overwatch came to the Switch last year, Fortnite's on there, Smash is clearly huge in the eSport world, Minecraft, Rocket League, these are all games that are on the Switch and that are multiplayer games. People playing together on multiplayer games want to be able to talk to each other. That's the whole fucking social aspect of playing a multiplayer game. And for fuck's sake, do these players need any more excuses to just ignore these titles on the Switch and jump on a PC and play them? Switch needs to be able to offer the same kind of communication services that the other platforms and PC offer in order for people to take multiplayer games seriously on the console. And if they did do that, I feel like it would open so many more doors for players on the Switch and for Nintendo as a company as well. Like, why have we not seen more MMOs coming over to the Switch? Well, it's obvious to me it's because nobody wants to sit grinding a fucking MMO without being able to chat to your friends on a headset. And no, the Nintendo Online app is not a solution to this problem. Finally, anyway, before I finish ranting, um, I have an honourable mention. Where the fuck is Netflix? Why is nobody talking about this? It's the glaringly obvious thing that's missing from the Switch. And what's worse, the last console, the one that flopped, it had it. It had Netflix. I feel at this point like... Uh, Nintendo is that person that you've been talking to for a while and they've got food on their face, but you've left it too long to tell them. And now it's kind of awkward because if you tell them that they've got food on their face, then they're going to know that the whole conversation has happened and nothing was said. There's a comic book app. You can read comic books on there. You can watch YouTube. But you can't watch Netflix. Anyway, I digress. Uh, I know I've talked a lot of shit in this video. I know I've rambled on for a while. Anyway, if you agree with my opinions or if you disagree with my opinions, please let me know in the comments section below. If you enjoyed the video, please subscribe. Please ring the bell. Let's be friends. And I'll see you in the next video. Thank you very much for watching. Peace.